Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. What's up? What's up? I'm thrown off. It's Monday today. Monday afternoon. Like, Monday random. Afternoon. So random, but I just, I was thrown off yesterday, so that's why we didn't no. record. I don't know. I just, I felt like, a, I just wanted to be a bum. Nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes it's okay to just be a bum. We went wine tasting on um, Friday, went to Paso Robles. We did a lot of wine tasting, man. Yeah. And so I was thrown off. I felt like all day Friday, I felt like it was Saturday. Yeah. So it kind of threw me all off. It was nice. I'm we kept so... on Saturday and it was kind of an ugly day. It, was, it felt like a Sunday. It was weird. Yeah, it did feel like a Sunday. It was so weird, but we had so much fun on Friday. That was, that was a fun trip. Yeah, fun. It was your first time wine tasting. I was a vir yep, virgin until like to the other day. Finally. Pop my wine tasting chair. Oh my gosh, yeah. By the second winery, you guys, <laughs> we took a little siesta a during the tasting. Yeah, At the, sec the second one, I mean, he was lights out. Like, full blown nap mode. Like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. No, no. no. It was longer than that. You're tripping. I'm not tripping. You were sleeping, how would you know? And then I bounced back. You did. The girls were a little bit afraid that, like, you were going to be like, Done for the day. I'm like, oh no, he's he just recharging his batteries. I'm just recharging my batteries. Yeah. I do that all the time. It was funny though. It was pretty, pretty funny. So that was your first time wine tasting. What'd you think? It was cool. I enjoyed it. I'm learning, you know, I'm learning about it. I'm not to drink a big chug, swish. Yeah, you, you oh my gosh. I was a little nervous with your swishing skills though. I was going to like the terror. The terror. The terror. The terror. Swish game on point, on point. But it was fun, oh man. I we started early, like we started drinking wine at like ten. Well, we started with champagne, like at nine thirty in the morning. I know that's super early. Yeah, so we start coffee. drinking at nine thirty. We I actually made it so that that was my cheat day, though. So I was prepared so that I, I changed my cheat day from Saturday to Friday because I wanted to just enjoy it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't want to think about it. I just wanted Did to you enjoy, enjoy the, the wines. Yeah, I loved it. I like reds. I enjoyed the reds and the cabs. I, I prefer a cab. But um, I literally drank and ate all day long. So it was an epic cheat day. Not necessarily hey, like... You, you only had a salad at lunch and then... Okay, so I had a salad. That was... I kept it kind of light because I knew it was going to be a long day ahead of me of eating. Then I had... The chartreuse, blah, 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 I can never say that. The chartreuse board at the at that first winery. Still, this is like ten, what ten, eleven a.m. Mm -hmm. I had salami and cheese and nuts. So that was that. Not too bad, but then wine, of course. So those calories add up. So the calories are starting to accumulate. Then at the second winery, when you fell asleep, I started to get a little tipsy. So I, of course, had my big Louis Vuitton bag with me, packed with snacks. I was like prepared yeah. with snacks. Mm. So because that at that winery, our reservation was only for, um, it was only for tasting, not for food. Yeah. So I started, I ate my popcorners and I had a built bar um, because I was starting to feel a little tipsy and the craving, you know, the munchies kicked in. So then that kind of like held me over. And then we went to a third winery and there we had bread. They brought out sourdough bread. Well, they Remember, they brought out a little yeah. of So more wine and then bread. And then I went in at that restaurant. Fish Gaucho, you guys, if you are anywhere in like California and you ever make your way to Paso Robles, Fish Gaucho is excellent. It was good. Chips. It's excellent Mexican fusion style restaurant. Yeah. Excellent cocktail. So after we had been drinking all day long, all day long. we proceed to switch to tequila. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to go gotcha. back to my favorites, yeah. I had a delicious strawberry basil margarita, and then I had a jalapeno margarita. So I had that. We had chips and guac, and we had two servings of chips with the salsa trio plus the guac. They brought it out twice. Oh, oh my gosh. And then I had a halibut tacos. I had a bite of your taco. And then, did you notice I ate an entire piece of cake? When do I eat cake? That's right. I never even eat cake. I was even like... Man, this cake must be good. And then that I ate mine because I ate mine, and then I started eating yours because yeah. I was drunk. Oh, that's see, what it was. See, this is what happens. The, this the is gates why, are wide open, huh? Yes, this is right. why don't do that very often. people say like, Drunky. oh, 
they associate like, oh, you can't, you gain weight if you drink alcohol. Well, no, you don't. Not if you track it. If you track alcohol, you can absolutely incorporate alcohol into your it's not the alcohol. routine and lose weight. It is it's, not the alcohol. It is. <laughs> it is because your inhibitions get lowered and yes. suddenly everything is a great idea. And the discipline level is very low. Low. At that point. Low. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're so, a fitness fanatic. I don't care if you're a a top level competitive man when you drink you drink those food all, demons yeah. and those food demons hit you and you're in a restaurant like that place yeah no. i mean but you know what it was one of those times so that was it that's what i ate um so i ended with a piece of cake so i'm glad i got my little sweet in because otherwise i hadn't had any other sweets and then um i didn't even eat all my tacos i only had one also full remember from all the chips and other stuff i think we had appetizer you ordered out I was just full. Oh, I also had ahi appetizer too there. So I, I have eight. You see, that's the difference between me and you, and that's what people don't believe. They don't believe how much I can eat. No. Like, you had a to-go box all cute. With, you ate one of your tacos and took oh, yeah. two tacos to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah I sense. ate my entire plate, the entire appetizer, my entire basket of chips, my piece of cake, some of your cake. Man. And I was still already trying to claim some of your tacos. <laughs> you were. I was like, I want some of that when I get hungry again. You got all mad at me. You fell asleep. <laughs> well, no, but you know what? Mm. The, the the smart decision that I did make is when we went back to our room, we hung out with our friends at the room, at the hotel room, and we smoked. Or I didn't smoke. You smoked. You brought you brought a blunt or what? You smoked? Yeah, I brought a pre-roll. Yeah, you brought a pre-roll. I made, I made it myself. That is where I I got smart. I did not smoke. Because I already knew I was full. My stomach was full. But had I smoked, I would have... Because you, we went back to the room. You left and went to the uh, front desk and stocked up on Twix and snacks and all that stuff. Yeah, if yeah. I had smoked, I would have been right there with you. But I didn't. So, that's and, safe. And, and I ate the tacos still. After I fell asleep, huh? Yeah, I was hungry. See? I fell asleep, and but you, yeah, but you're good. You still didn't eat food. twice as me for the no. day, and I'm supposed no. to eat half as much as you. Yeah, but it's okay. It's you know it's one of those times, and I talk about this with you guys a lot. Talk about it with my clients. Worth it? Like, was it worth it? Like on Saturday when I wake up and I'm thinking to myself, man, I kind of went in a little bit more than I should have, but was it worth it? Hundred thousand million percent worth it. Worth it delicious enjoyed the day i didn't have a hangover because i did drink a lot of water i was really conscious about drinking water so that i, I didn't want to get hung over um but it was worth it i enjoyed it and but right back on track saturday and it was a little funky for me to be back on track on a saturday because i usually do not switch my cheat day around and like i had discussed in last week's episode i was very honest and told you guys if I did not have a photo shoot this week, I would have continued and enjoyed Saturday too, because that's what I like to do when I'm traveling. Um, but because I had the photo shoot, I had to reel it back in and get right back on track, right back to macros. And I feel good. Like I don't, even though I went a little overboard, I didn't fully soak up my entire deficit that I had created for the week. And that's why I try to like explain to people, like, don't freak out. Like, if you have a day where you go overboard, at the at the very least, maybe you're gonna put a pin in your progress that week. You're not gonna necessarily progress, but you're not gonna like undo months of hard work in, no. a, in a weekend no. bender. You're sometimes, really not. Sometimes you do good to your body. It'll, it'll 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 go right through you. Sometimes sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need to just like fill it up. Sometimes with it does do that. Like it's like it a, it, it's kind of like a it creates like this whoosh effect. Well, sometimes I'll tell you what does happen. And then you get leaner and you're like, what the heck? Well, I, you know I, why? I've been through that. You know what that is? Because the carbs speed up your metabolism. Like your body sometimes will start to, your, your metabolism will kind of start to power down in the absence of carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important. And I tell this to my clients, have the refeed day, have the weekly cheat day. That is going to keep your metabolism healthy. If you deplete for too long, especially like carbohydrates, it will, your yeah, metabolism is going to adapt. And yeah, that is why a does. lot of times people will say after a cheat meal, they actually have a flush on the scale. It happens all the time with competitors. So like competitors in the like bikini competitor space, they will deplete prior to a show. And then their coaches will fill them up with carbohydrates when it's time to compete so that their muscle bellies get nice and full and it shows, they show well on stage. Mm -hmm. 
oftentimes when they're filling up with carbs, I mean, I'm talking a lot of carbs, like 200 grams of carbs, 200, 300 grams of carbs. That's a lot. For you'd a think woman. that they would suddenly gain a bunch of weight because technically carbohydrates, you're going to hold water and that's why you're carving up so that you can hold water in your muscles. Yep. You'll drop weight on the scale. I <laughs> see it time and time again with competitors. They're like, coach, like I'm, I'm eating all these carbs and they're like going right through me. I'm, I dropped another pound on the scale. Like it happens. Yeah, Alyssa, you spread it from the time. She, she didn't weigh, so we don't know, but oh. she did have to continue to carb up. Like it wasn't filling her up, Jeez. I mean, you know, because your metabolism gets revved yeah. up. It really yeah, like does. It carbs. loves the carbs. It goes, oh yeah, she's feeding me. We're, we're good. We have all of these, this energy coming in, this glycogen, happy because it recognizes carbohydrates immediately gets recognized as energy that can be used immediately. That's the difference between carbs and fats. Yeah. Fats is not as much, it has to be like, like a uh, caressed, you know, the, the process of turning fats into energy and, and ketones to be used as energy has a little bit of caressing that takes place. It's a slower process. Oh yeah. You know, carbohydrates can be converted immediately. That's why low intensity cardio is good for fat burning because you don't need to convert the fat so rapidly. And that's why higher intensity workouts like HIT and nice resistance class. training and things like that, that's Ready. like HIT, <laughs> will yeah. will want like will want carbohydrates because it's fast, yeah. fast acting. But it's okay if I do it faster though, right? Training. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's what what's your net effect for the day? Are you doesn't really matter if you're in a deficit or not. You, you're not fasted. I mean, you're fasted, but you have glycogen from yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you this know. morning, you still had glycogen in there from yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So I'm good then. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you're good. When I, when I was on keto, it kind of like sometimes I hit a wall and be spazzed. And, like, and you know why you hit the wall? Like, oh, shit. You hit the wall because for a workout like that that's re that requires that that glycogen energy, that yeah. quick energy, mm -hmm. you don't have it because your glycogen storage gets emptied quickly because you're not eating carbohydrates. So that is why if you're on keto, if you've noticed, like people that are on keto, they'll, they'll do like at the gym, they'll do like MCT oil or coconut oil, something like that, mm -hmm. because that's the most rapid conversion into ketones because it bypasses the digestive system and it just converts almost instantly to ketones which means it can be used for energy more rapidly than say stored body fat. Oh, gotcha. So stored body fat is gonna take a little more work. Yep. And that's why your body will, it will use stored body fat for sure. It's gonna use stored body fat if you're, as long as you're in a deficit, if it needs to. But that's not the first thing your body's gonna go to. But I've experimented in the past. You told me like when I was super lean, I'm like, eat a donut before class. See if you feel the difference. Oh yeah, you feel it, sure. Yeah, it's because rapid. I can go forever. It's a rapid. I can get like it's like it gives me a. But a for boost. some people, it'll it'll tank you too. Not me. Um, because, I got a pound of fucking. Uh, well, dozen, yeah, but it, it, one, the reason it tanks. It but work. if you're not as if you're not if you're not insulin um, resistant, it's not so bad because mm -hmm. if you're insulin resistant, your body even with a little bit of sugar releases a lot of insulin into your bloodstream. So if it releases a lot of insulin. It's going to take all that blood sugar really rapidly out of your bloodstream and that's going to crash your energy. Mm -hmm. But if you're not insulin resistant, then your body's only going to, you're going to eat the donut. It's going to release a little bit of insulin. It's going to pull that, pull some sugar in, you know, out of your bloodstream, but it's not going to crash you. And you're going to, that sugar that it pulls out, it's going to push it into your cells and it's going to be available for immediate use, immediate energy. It's a fast digesting, um, what carbohydrate basically sure so like that's why a lot of times yeah, people will pretty have much it hits your stomach and yeah. your bone off and running yeah i mean it hits your mouth actually it's often yeah running. that's why kids bounce off the walls yeah, yeah. when they eat sugar they right go crazy they go crazy it's like a sugar high and then they crash it's funny and right? they crash yeah. after, yeah. all over the place screaming running around and all of a sudden boom they fall yeah. flat and they're out they're nap times yeah i wonder the kids get nap times in school anymore like I briefly in remember school? getting nap times. I remember. I don't know where I briefly. Not in pre maybe in preschool, not in like actual school. No, not school. I don't remember. I was super young, but I was like, it was trippy. I don't know where I was. At school. I can briefly remember. That. I don't know if I was in preschool or where, but it was like it was a siesta time back then. Hmm. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, but anyways, um, so the week the trip was good. The weekend was good, but right back on track, and I feel good. Like I don't feel like, oh man, like. I did some damage or anything like that. I don't at all. Really, it starts, the damage starts to come into play 
when you start stringing multiple bad days together. It's called, it basically you spill over. That's literally what's happening. Your, your glycogen tank only has so much room in there. So if you, if you fill it up one day and then you continue to fill it up the next day, even though it's still full from the day before, what happens? It overflows. And when it overflows, it stores as fat. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it is a carb, a fat, or protein. When you overflow it, you are storing fat. That is what you're doing. People don't believe that, though. That's why people on keto got a lot of people gain weight. Fat, well, fat is one of the I easiest. Was eating, I was eating too much, remember? Fat is the easiest macronutrient to store as fat. It's fat is the easiest, then carbs. People would think that it's carbs, but it's not. It is a facade because they think they're storing fat because the scale moves up. No, it's water. The scale moves up because of water. Yeah. Fat is the easiest micronutrient to store as fat, then carbs, and then protein is the last. Protein is the least likely to be stored as fat. Your body doesn't easily store protein as fat. And that's why the carnivore diet people, they get, they're get very successful. Oh, yeah. For really one, it's very, a lot, creates a lot of satiety because protein is very filling. There is a very high thermic effect of food for protein, which means that your body takes a lot of energy in order to digest protein, especially things like red meat and things like that. So that's going to increase your caloric deficit just by taking more energy to digest it. And so those two things are going to control the volume in and of itself. However, on the third note, it's your body doesn't like storing protein as, as fat. So it only does if it absolutely has to in extreme excess. So that's why a lot of people do well on that kind of diet. I just feel like it's more, anytime that something is super restrictive like that. It's hard. It's hard to sustain. It's hard. Yeah. Um, and so you, you have to be. You're going to cave. I don't care who yeah, you are. That's how this, you're going to, you're carnivore or not. You can do it for a year or two. Listen, I did keto. I, I lasted what, a couple of years. I did it. But ultimately you missed carbs. You, you did. You always yeah, missed carbs. Yeah. It's just hard, man. I was wired eating, growing up eating carbs, and you know, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I just feel like I want to, I just want to live a life where nothing's off limits. Yeah. I feel like it's healthier mentally for the relationship with food if you don't put anything off limits. Mm -hmm. Allow everything. Allow everything. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times people... I want you to explain that. People explain that when you say allow everything, so people don't. Well, really, I mean, she said allow everything. No, no she don't really I mean, literally mean that. Well, if you're mm -hmm. listening to this podcast, then you should be well aware of my philosophies on that. Everything in moderation. Yep. And if you know approximately how much you should be eating for your goals, then that's kind of how you gauge, you know, how much of a treat you should be having. What I love to, and what I think is is a great way to kind of like control treats is when you're having a treat. Make sure it's not endless. Don't allow your access to a treat be extremely available because the thing that comes along with treats is yes, they do have a different chemical response in your body. And it's a lot easy to overeat something that has those chemical responses, especially sweets. You easy. know what's really good way sweets to control it is sweets like- and chips for me. Like Trader Joe's has a lot of these options. They have a lot of treats that are like mini. Yeah. So I know you guys have talked about it before, like my mini cones. I love my mini cones, but they have some other things that I recently bought too. The um, the brownie coffee ice cream sandwich. Mm -hmm. no it minis. is like maybe a um, maybe like two and a half by two and a half inch square. Pretty thick, but it's 140 calories. It's like 18 carbs, 140 calories. You know, it has some sugar in it, but again, the issue is not necessarily sugar. The issue is what sugar does to you and leads you to consume more sugar. If you can control your volume by limiting your access, then it's not as risky. You know what I'm saying? Have one, one only. Yeah, so I had like I had one on Saturday. Look, listen, I'm not gonna lie, Saturday was a little hard. You didn't go back on track. I'm gonna bust you out. Nope. You did not go back on track. No, that's so guys, how done. think think no, I know, but I'm just saying you didn't go back on track. So imagine how even that much harder it is for me when you're not on track and I don't want to be on track. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I wanted to enjoy it. I want, I'm like, man, I can just be on the couch right now enjoying. Oh, well, you got goals. But, um, but I did allow myself to have that ice cream sandwich. It was really good. 
and um, that those kind of things. I also picked up from Trader Joe's like uh, these mint cookie sandwiches that are good. I thought that was good. Those were like 120 calories. The mini cones are only 70 calories. Those like are good. it's so easy to fit it into your like if you have balanced macros where you have um, you're not keto because problem is with keto you gotta stick to the keto treats which there's mm -hmm. plenty of those too there's plenty of those i'm just not super familiar with them right now just because i'm not on keto but there's plenty of those too so even if you're on keto macros then just you know allow yourself those treats that you enjoy just make sure that you can limit them and limit your access to them like for me it's always dangerous to to go get a dozen donuts that is dangerous. It's so dangerous. Stands. Yeah. We get tear those in easily. Yeah. We so are going to get stands this weekend, though. They're so doughy and soft and sugary. Oh, my God. Those yeah. are dangerous. This weekend, I'm going to have a good cheat day. A full, like, untracked cheat day. Just because oh. it is, um, my fo I have a photo shoot on Saturday that I've been cutting for. Which, by the way, update on my cut. So, it was four weeks. It has been exactly four weeks since I cut. If you guys, let me recap. I had gained four pounds from my six trips that I enjoyed very much. So, I needed to lose four pounds. And then I also um, just wanted to continue to cut up until that photo shoot. Just because I wanted to kind of like tighten things up. I've definitely tightened things up. I haven't actually weighed myself um, since I lost the four pounds after three weeks. So, I didn't weigh myself. La um, um, when it hit the fourth week, I would have weighed myself, but I started my period. So I stay off the scale during that time. I felt like there was a five pound brick in my stomach. I'm like, I'm not gonna weigh myself, but I feel good. Like I feel, um, lean. I've definitely, so it works. I'm happy with where I'm at. Um, my cut was successful. I'll have the celebratory cheat day cause I've been craving pizza and stand. So I'll have that on Saturday after the photo shoot. And then oh, yeah, I'm try the new place out, right? Yeah, Coliseum Pizza. It's like New York style. Yeah, give it a shot. But then after that, I will do one more week of cutting just to kind of like undo some of that because that's gonna be a little bit of like an epic day. So I'm gonna do one more week of cutting, then I'm gonna go back into my reverse diet. Slow reverse, slow reverse. But I'd like to get I wanna get my uh, my um macros back up again and yeah, I just feel good. So been good. Sounds like a plan. Stan. Yeah. So it just goes to show you that uh, macros works, guys. It, you just got to follow it. It works. It works like a charm. It's like, boom. Like, it took me six weeks to put on the four pounds. I, it should have technically taken me six weeks to take it off, but it actually didn't. My body was very responsive. It took me three weeks to get the four pounds off. And I attribute that to I had reverse dieted prior to doing that and so my body was just very responsive so it's important to do that reverse diet when you when you are done when you feel good reverse diet get yourself your body back up back used to like higher macros but stay on course when you resist the urge when you hit your goals to think it's over and just go crazy on the way up. it's never over that's if you don't embrace that if you do not embrace the fact that this is a permanent thing it has to be important enough to you to be a part of your life forever. If you don't embrace that, you're never going to be able to, to sustain it. Never, ever, ever. You are going to yo-yo diet forever. And you're going to be forever, kicking forever, yourself. Ever. Yeah, you're going to be <laughs> kicking yourself when you find yourself back in the same position again, having to lose the same amount of weight or more. Oh, don't yeah. do it. Because if you don't do that, if you don't give up and you accept that this is permanent... You can live an amazing, balanced, enjoyable life. Look, I had an enjoyable day and wine tasting. I didn't give two shits about how many calories I ate that day. I have no idea okay. what I did. I'm gonna enjoy this weekend too, on Saturday, one day. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna thoroughly enjoy it, you know, and and guilt free. And I'm still gonna look and feel my best. And that's that's the goal. The goal is to look and feel your best, still have balance, still enjoy the things you love. That is what I try to hammer home. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. But uh, I can't wait to have that Saturday cheating on that. <laughs> You're back on the pizza. And that pizza. Oh, I'm kind of Okay, so pizza. do not forget to remind me that I have to. we have to um, pre-order the Stan's Donuts. You better put a note in your phone Thursday morning. Well, you're supposed to remind me. What time do you have to call them by? Just it's just off. Thursday morning. I don't know, but... Oh. 
Because I only do like so many. I know. Maybe I'll even call Wednesday. I don't know. I'm scared. So I'm going to get those donuts. And then so we've, so we've been driving by this place, by our house. We've lived here for five years already. And I've seen this place and I just finally decided to Yelp it and think like, I wonder if the pizza's good there. It's a New York style pizza and it had really good Yelp reviews, like a lot of Yelp reviews, like four and a half stars. And I want to try everything because I just want to see what's good there. So I want to get a Stromboli, a Calzone. Like I'm not going to stuff myself like bingey, but I want to try a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. I want to try their New York style pizza. I want to try the Calzone. I want to try the Stromboli. Stromboli is going to be tough. That's going to be tough to, to compare because we have a Stromboli paste place that we love. Almost feel like I want to buy one there. And do a, have that a side by side. Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. But I'm excited for the donuts because I haven't had donuts in a while. I know. Especially stands. Ooh, those are good. I haven't had donuts during my cut. I, I gave up the, the donuts during my cut. It just goes to show you that just because you have something every day and you love it and you're it's the best thing, or not every day, but every week, yeah. doesn't mean you can't tell yourself no. Not going to have it for this many weeks because of this or that. It's just, we have control over ultimately, no, it doesn't matter, urges, cravings, willpower, discipline, whatever. At the end of the day, we have control over what we put into our mouth. Say, yeah, Nobody ties you down and shoves food yep, into your exactly. mouth. Exactly. Don't blame McDonald's. Don't blame the TV. Don't, don't blame, blame your husband. Your... Don't blame the person yeah. that's eating around you. Like, I didn't, that would be bullshit if, like, I got mad at you. On Saturday, you don't have a freaking photo shoot. Like, you wanted to enjoy the rest of the weekend. We had traveled that morning. You wanted to enjoy a little more splurge. Yeah. But, like, it's not my right to get mad at you for that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? <laughs> That's fine. But, but people, do. people do. Same thing. Like, and that doesn't, shouldn't change whether or not, it shouldn't change whether I'm going to have it or not. That's all part of it. You have to learn how to set boundaries for yourself. Mm -hmm. Hard no. You know? Yeah. You don't think sometimes, you know, I smoke weed every day. I'm used to it, but sometimes it, the munchies come over me and I'm like craving like fast food, like every time in the sun, but I don't act upon it. Yeah. I mean, that's why I would smoke. <laughs> I, don't I do smoke at night sometimes. I did actually smoked a little last night because Diesel had us up at two o'clock in the morning. One of the dogs woke us up at two o'clock in the morning, like yeah. crying, needed to go out to the bathroom or whatever. And yeah. if I wake up like that, like abruptly, I know. and it's like, the middle of the night, I will have the worst insomnia. So it did put me back to sleep. When I smoke the one I'm really tired, it does not make me, it does not make me have the munchies. But if I would have smoked on Friday night. With us, with Vicky and I? Yeah. Got her lit. Yeah, it would have been all bad. Mm -hmm. I bet. I was already like tipsy, that was enough. I drank water. I think I had, I had another snack in my purse. I had that, Smart Sweets. I had smart sweets and called it called it a night, but it was like I said, it was a thousand percent worth it. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. It's fun. It's an adventure. But remember that it's not only the. I think uh, it's so easy to want to blame things for weight gain. Like I know, right? Always remember that usually it's not a direct effect. There are very few things that are a direct effect. You know, like people will say, like, oh sugar um makes me gain weight what well, why the sugar it's not directly making you gain weight because studies show look for studies look up the data real scientific data studies show that if you have two focus groups one eats more sugar than the other but they're both eat the same amount they're both the, in the same caloric intake or they're not that they're the the same deficit they will both groups will gain or lose the same amount of weight. The bear, whether they had sugar or not sugar doesn't impact it. In the absence of a surplus, you will not gain weight. Mm, wow. Even if it, one group has more sugar than the other group, is really? what I'm saying. Yes, there has been, the, one of the studies I was know. reading about, because I had had a conversation with Lisa about it, and she's like, well, but doesn't sugar make you gain weight? I'm like, no, sugar makes you overeat. Sugar makes you eat more sugar. Mm -hmm. Sugar has that chemical response that makes you overeat it. Yep. Therefore, you have a surplus. Therefore, it indirectly causes you to gain weight. But if you have two controlled groups and you are both eating a surplus or a deficit, say you're both eating a deficit, one group has more sugar, 
the weight loss is, and the deficit is the same, the weight loss will be the same. Interesting. It's good to know. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, there Always was. Always blame sugar. I, and the, the specific study I was looking at had like 2,000 participants. It was a yeah. good, it was a good amount of people and there was nobody get, stood to gain from the study. And that's the main thing. You have to be very again. careful when you're looking at studies. University studies. No, but university, university, no, but universities aren't the ones who do a lot of the studies, I know they do. but you have to look at who's funding the study. Exactly. Okay. So if an anti-sugar company is funding the study, then they're going to skew it in their favor. They've done that. Oh, well, it happens all the time. Or, or the study will be like, pay attention how many people are in it. So if they want to skew the results, maybe they're going to have like 10 people. You know, mm -hmm. a study of 10 people tells you nothing. nothing. Come on. It's a joke. It's like, that's like a, a sixth grade science experiment. Okay. <laughs> it's you, a, you want it's like a good, a good amount of people in the study yeah. to, to really get some good yeah. quality data out and of it. Exactly. And it's worthless. So what the hell are you 10 people? That's nothing. And be, and try to reframe, like, look, if you want, if you don't, if you're not interested in studies and you just, you know, I guess rely on people like me or whatever to give you this information, that's fine too. But just reframe from getting caught in the, um, getting, believing a headline. Like, don't think that you read a study if you just read a headline. You didn't read the study. No shit. I'm... If something says studies show yeah. that CLA prevents fat storage, that's what it'll say. And, be like, and people will be like, oh my God, I read a study. CLA prevents... No, you didn't read the study. No. You didn't. You read the, the, the tagline. Yeah. You read the... That's how they get you, man. ...subject. Yes. You did not read the study. No. Read the study. Studies show that in lab mice, there were some benefits to preventing fat storage. However, when then tested on humans, there was minimal, if any, change or effect on humans fat storage. So you read the, 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 the title and now you're gonna go spend a bunch of money on CLA thinking it's gonna prevent fat storage when unless you're a lab mice, <laughs> it's not. So see what I'm saying? So be cautious of that, don't get stuck in that. I got a dumb question. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people won't have asked this question too, but they perform studies on mice, yeah? Mm -hmm. A lot of times. Are, are we in the same family as mice? Some human in mice, or they just... No, but that's like the trying, first... So that's usually it gives, like... It gives them like a bio, faith, it's like foundation? The, it's the first step. Okay. okay, well, in mice it does this. So now let's go to like rats, then let's go to like other, you know, other animals. Uh -huh. And then gotcha. humans, and then it gets it starts goes, to advance. It starts, one of it starts to advance, and then it, and then there's human, you know, human trials. Then it becomes That's clinical right. trials. That's when it's getting far advanced gotcha. in the in the process. So a clinical trial is through a hospital, and you have to like meet all this criteria. That's you know. crazy because that vaccine should have went from A to Z in a heartbeat, though. <laughs> yeah, but you know why that they're saying <laughs> people think that, but it's it's not because they've actually been. Um, working this? on this vaccine for a really long time. Have they? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, they know for a really SARS. long time. Exactly, and so it's a it's a this variant a of SARS. This is yeah. a SARS this COVID, is a COVID nineteen, 19 right? Of a SARS, yeah. So it was part of that. So people do think that it was very rapid, but not necessarily. There and who already, knows? Can you only imagine studies. what else is out there that we don't know about? That's super scary. That they're already working on trying to like. I'm sure they know. You know, we you know, know about right? Ebola. That's the scariest one on planet Earth. Yeah, what was the name of that documentary that we watched? I oh, wish I knew because it was good. Yeah. Contain containment. Containment? I think it was containment. But listen, if COVID, so if COVID if COVID if if Ebola had the infection rate or whatever of COVID nineteen or transmission rate, oh we'd be in trouble. And let me I tell you. I would be worried. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not scared of COVID no. one day at all. One not once. But I'm telling you right now. I would have not left the house. Yeah. Hundred thousand percent. Some of you guys that don't know what I'm Ebola is, I'm like, petrified of that. Look it up. It's like it's like there's no there's no cure for it. If you catch it, you're pretty much fucked. It's what ninety percent death rate. Yeah, and it like you bleed <laughs> out of every bleed. every orifice. You're, it's disgusting. Your eyeballs, your eyeballs. nose, your ears, your mouth, your everything. You're just bleeding Horrible. internally, bleeding out outwardly. It's weird. Yeah, that yeah. was good. That's actually a really good documentary. Those doctors in Nigeria was it Nigeria? They saved the world. Basically. Yeah, somebody was passing through, somebody important, and he felt sick, got to the hospital, and unfortunately, they, they were able to catch it there, but he infected. But they said because of the way they 
handled it, mm -hmm. they contain. I think it is called containment. Yeah, because so many people in Nigeria is like a hub airport, so millions of passengers are going through there. This could have spread to the world because Nigeria is a hub to go to Europe. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And a lot of so Nigeria... it's it's not a documentary, it's a movie based on yeah. a true story. Yeah, That's based, what it's about. yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. So good. But okay. yeah, you guys, so when you read like don't tell me I I read a study unless you actually read the study. Read how many people who funded the study, like, you know, have there been other studies? You know, really, if if you're going to read studies, make sure that you're not just getting, most people just get looped into the headline. Unfortunately, it's going to go in one ear and out the other. Let's just keep it real. People are going to go read the studies. But if they want to, go read No, them. but yeah, that's why instead they'll listen to a podcast like this. Because I'll too. read the study. I always get curious of certain things, you know, and as, as I've started to like, you don't like to guess. because I just really have started to, I make sure that I read through things. I don't just take things at face value. Damn. I really read through things. Like, what does this matter? Like, what, why, you know, I don't just think like, okay, eat whole foods. Just like people used to say, like, diet and exercise. That's just taking that's something. A generic, that's a generic doctor saying. At, at tell you. Face value. Diet and yeah. exercise. Well, guess what? You, you can eat healthy and still be overweight and, unhe and unhealthy because you're over consuming. Yep. So it's just very generic. Like go a little deeper than that. What does that actually mean? Diet and exercise. Why diet and exercise? Do I need to lose weight? Is that why? Because that's one thing. If I need to lose weight because it's impacting my heart or whatever, then I need to make sure I'm in a caloric deficit. I need to reduce the volume of my food, whatever. If I'm diabetic, I need to be on a specific diet because doctors won't even do that. They won't even be like, well, you specifically, you should be doing this and this and that. They're, they don't do that. They don't know. They don't even study nutrition. Nope. They don't. That's what they have to refer you to the dietitian school. a lot of times because yeah. they don't. They but don't even know. then, like the dietitian, it's like some yeah. old lady from like, you know, she went to school in like 1972. Okay, have you like... Up to date on Gotten stuff. up to date. Science like, changed. Nutritional science has changed. Yeah. Things have changed. It's important. I just stop taking, I, I really, am, it's important for me. I don't like to take things at face value. I like to look a little deeper. What is this really trying to tell me? Or does this really impact weight or whatever? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, because people just say, oh, like, oh, um, sugar's bad. Sugar's bad for you. So avoid all sugar and then you're good. So then they start eating things with no sugar or whatever. But is it really bad? You know, like, why is it bad? Like, think, and maybe it's not bad for everybody. Maybe it's only bad in excess. Is it horrible? Like, you just start to think a little bit about things. Don't just take everything at sur surface value. Anything, anything in excess is bad for you. Even things that are good for you. True. Right? Even yeah. water, which has nothing as no calories, whatever you can, you can. You me. can die you by over drinking water. You First will dehydrate yourself. Yep. You will literally dehydrate your body. That's crazy. Because you produce too much urine, it goes through your body rapidly. It does not hydrate your organs if you drink too much, if you overconsume it, and you just die. You could die. Mm -hmm. They've had like you know how to remember that. Remember the show. Same thing when you overly dehydrate when they find you like weeks later you're barely alive. You, you got to give them sips of water. Oh yeah, you can't. Opposite. You can't yes. just chug raw water either. You'll no. get you send them the shock. Yes, you, you have know, to do it slowly. Slowly, like little baby sips. Yeah. Rehydrate them. So it's the hot. It's crazy. Even something as simple See? as water is bad for you if consumed incorrectly. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? So everything. So it doesn't mean I think that you know it's good just to not vilify things necessarily, nah. unless specifically for you, you have a condition. Maybe you're diabetic, and your body, your your pancreatic system and your insulin system aren't working properly and you need inter medical intervention you need to really pay attention to what certain things that you consume certain micronutrients sugar then that's specific to the person with that condition it doesn't mean that everybody is in that you know someone can consume a moderate amount of sugar and be fine for their whole lives it's when they over consume sugar that they can make themselves type 2 diabetic yep that's not genetic. That's you can literally through diet give yourself diabetes yep. by overdoing the sugar. But if you don't overdo it, so just because Jane Doe can't control her sugar intake 
It doesn't mean that I should not eat any sugar because it might give me diabetes. Because guess what? I can control my sugar intake. That's all that matters. Right? Yep. So <laughs> it's, that's what I mean. Like, it's not like, it's not, don't take everything at surface value. People do. It doesn't mean that it's bad for you. It's bad for Jane. And, you know, it might be bad for your neighbor, but it's not bad for you because you are able to control your volume. You don't have any, you know, pre-existing conditions or any medical conditions that are holding you back. So therefore it's not an issue for you. Like there's some people who can't do the keto diet because their body does not digest fats very well. Or they have issues with their gallbladder. Like they have gallstones or issues with their gallbladder. High fat foods can aggravate that. There are certain people that just don't do well with the keto diet, but there are certain people that cannot eat carbohydrates. They don't do well with carbohydrates. So, you know, different strokes for different folks. It doesn't mean that keto is bad. It doesn't mean that high carb diets are bad. It just depends on what's right for you. If you're the lucky one that doesn't have any conditions or medical situations or whatever, then choose, just choose what you enjoy the most. Choose the, the diet that you enjoy. Yeah. Exactly. I choose flexible. Of course you do. You look, you look like you're falling asleep. I'm a little tired. I <laughs> just drink a whole coffee. I know, but I worked out hard today. So did so I. Boo hoo. What do you mean? Why Why did you give that look right now? I didn't work out hard today? I'm sure you didn't. Well, you I'm gave me like a crooked eye right now. I'm sure I worked out hard today. But then you, when I said I did too. I'm sure you did. I did. I walked this morning. I worked out, I had shoulders and triceps with Alyssa. I did 15 minutes on the bike, and then I did 30 minutes on that machine at 3.8 miles per hour. So I some good work. So why are you giving me that crooked eye? No reason. I'm just saying I worked hard today too. Well, I know, but I'm not falling asleep. I beat the bag, I beat the bag <laughs> up in the train. <laughs> Well, we will let you go so you can go take a little nap, put the pillow on your chest and knock out for another 15-minute uh, recharge. 15-minute recharge. The next time we'll be doing the morning, we'll have more energy. Yeah, we got to get Mike back to mornings because uh, he is he's, I'm losing my co-host over here. I'm tired. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.